Hello everyone, this is Shama with Girls and Geese. We are back for yet another edition of our Ask a Black Belt segment. If you haven't tuned in for these before, this is a unique opportunity for you guys to ask questions directly to some of the most prominent black belts in the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu world. Today we have a very special guest on. She is a multiple time world champion, ranked number one by the IBJJF. We have Claudia Duvall joining us today um, and she is here to ask, uh, be here to answer any of your questions and uh, uh, get to know her a little bit better if you don't already. Um, so without further ado, we're bringing her on and uh, can't wait to get on with this uh, discussion with her. Oh, there we are. Yay. Thank you so Hello. much for joining us today. <laughs> I'm not sure what was going on. It kept like sending the request and saying I couldn't, but glad we got you <laughs> on. <laughs> oh, so thank you so much for joining us. You know, I appreciate you being here today. Um, really excited oh, my to, pleasure. to learn from you and get some insight. I'm sure that a lot of people tuning in today have some questions for you. But real quick, uh, just give us a little bit of rundown. So who is Claudia Duvall? If you were to package that up and, and explain to people, how do you explain who you are? Uh, ooh. As, as a big question. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I guess, um, well, I'm a girl that, um, big thing about me is, um, I started training jiu-jitsu a little late, um, started when I was 21, I guess that's the big difference about me, um, from the, uh, most athletes, I think, so, um, uh, and I didn't start competing, um, until later, I mean, I did compete, like, three times as a white belt, but then, uh, I only competed again as a brown belt, so, another thing. Um, and then I started competing, like, um, a lot, like, uh, for, like, five years, and then, like, uh, COVID happened, <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So how, how did you get into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? How did you, uh, find it when you were 21? Uh, so I started martial arts when I was 18. I started with uh, judo because my younger brother was doing it. And uh, my dad was like, hey, so your younger brother was doing judo. He's really good at it. Don't you want to try it? I was like, okay, because I'll try it. And uh, I really liked uh, judo when I tried it. It was really fun. And uh, I did three years of it. I, I actually enjoyed it a lot, and uh, I started jiu-jitsu to actually improve my ground game for judo, and then I I ended up not doing judo anymore, and then just doing jiu-jitsu. <laughs> Excellent. So in competing as much as you have, have you ever, or in your jiu-jitsu journey in general, have you ever experienced what they call burnout? Like where maybe you're like, oh, I, I need a break from jujitsu, um, or any kind of anxiety with competing, or, or anything of that nature. And if so, how have you dealt with that? That was one of the questions we got. Uh, the burnout, I guess I'm feeling it uh, now, uh, but that's not just from competing too much. I guess uh, all the events that uh, that have been happening uh, from the last year, year and a half. And uh, anxiety, yes, uh, before every single tournament, I get way too nervous before competing. And, uh, you know, my heart starts racing. I don't really have an uh, exact moment when it's going to happen. Sometimes it's the day before. Sometimes it's like two days before. Big tournaments, it's like the day before, two days before. Sometimes it's like two hours before, but it it's going to happen. It always happens. And I still don't know how to deal with it. I still don't have a... <laughs> Excellent. 
Yeah, I, I, I think that's something that just, it just never goes away. <laughs> yeah, so, I do, I still have them. People, people ask me, like, how do you, do you deal with it? Like, I don't, I still don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, so have you ever had a situation where maybe you were, uh, uh, like somebody had asked you to partner that you ne don't necessarily want to work with? And uh, how do you suggest to someone kind of avoiding that or, or getting around that if they don't want to work with them? Do you have any advice for people? Uh, it happens a lot. I mean, being a woman, there's, you know, a lot of times when, uh, you know, you have to, you know, roll with men that they don't really know how to use their strength. Being a woman, it happens a lot. And uh, especially having a male professor and uh, they really don't know, they don't really understand what's going on. And I've seen it happening, you know, like a male professor seeing a guy just wrecking a female student and they're like just seeing it happen like, oh, okay. And they really don't see the problem. And uh, so, like, being a woman, I think you should understand that it's okay to say no to a male partner because uh, there's so much, you know, going on around jiu-jitsu that, you know, sometimes, like, people get this crazy idea that, like, oh, no, you have to be tough. If you do jiu-jitsu, you have to be a tough woman and you can't say no, you have to prove you're tough and you 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 can't say no, you have to train with everybody. No, you don't. You don't have to train with everybody. You have to you have to uh, take care of yourself, take care of your body and uh, you need to uh, prioritize your health and your well-being. So like if you're training with some with someone that and that person is hurting you at first you can politely say like hey you're hurting me can you please try and go light and if that person is not doing that and you're like hey i i tried asking you and it seems that you're not able to do that so like i i think i i can't train with you because you seem not to be able to <laughs> to train with me and I think like women should be able to do that. So, like mostly, and even a guy. Like if you're a small guy and there's like a huge guy that is just like cracking you and hurting you, you're like you, it should be okay. I mean, it is okay. You have to be, to be, you have to be able to to tell someone that you don't want to work with them because either they're hurting you or just because you don't you don't want to. Like you should be okay. You should should be able to to say that. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I understand that your your family had wanted you to be an engineer or to do something technical <laughs> and you went in the different route and, and went into jujitsu. Was that hard for your family at first to kind of um, accept that you'd taken on a different path in life? Uh, actually, my dad wanted me to be a doctor because um, in his mind, that's like how you make money. Uh, he's not wrong, though. <laughs> like, like you, you can make a lot of money uh, being a doctor. But uh, I think that's something you got to really have a passion for if you, if you want to, to be a doctor. And um, I don't. I don't have a passion for, for it. So I don't think I would, uh, I would do do well um, doing that so and I always had a passion for math calculus and everything so that's why I decided to try and follow the engineering path and uh, I did like uh, two and a half years of engineering but um, didn't go too well for me and uh, my dad always had the uh, this idea that if you wanted to do well in life, you had to have a diploma. And uh, so at first, when I told him that I didn't really want to keep on with uh, university, he wasn't too thrilled about it, which is why, like, when I decided not to, to go to university anymore, I didn't tell him right away. It took me a few years to tell him. But... Um, 
in the end, when he saw that I was doing jiu-jitsu, doing well in tournaments and uh, doing seminars and stuff, and he was like, oh, okay, it seems like that's something she's able to do. That's excellent. That's excellent that you have that support from your family. I know you were just like competing, refereeing, traveling all over. How was it for you when everything kind of stopped? Was it kind of an adjustment? Was it hard to accept the fact that your life had kind of changed for a little bit and you were a little bit more stationary? Because I know you were on the road constantly for, for a long time. Yeah, so, like, when the pandemic start, that that's when, like, uh, I was starting to get a little burned out. So the, the, somebody was asking about it. Like, my, my body was just tired. I was exhausted. Like, I needed a little break. So I needed this little time off. So it was actually good that I had to to take a break. So... Uh, and then after that, so many things happened, and <laughs> from there, like, uh, and still trying to figure out so many things in my life, and <laughs> still haven't. <laughs> yeah, figure out. I, I, absolutely, I know. I know that you've you've been through a tremendous amount of uh, hardship in your own personal life. You know, I, you've had to change gyms. You've had to change your your teams you were very vocal uh, about um what had happened how have you adjusted to being in your no team and uh moving forward with your life uh it hasn't really been easy um that's that's really like uh it's a sensitive subject because, like, once once I came forward with what happened to me, like, because it happened a long time ago, but um, once I finally uh, came forward with it, like, I knew uh, I knew I was gonna get a backlash, but like, even though you knew, uh, you know, something was gonna happen, uh, the way when you see something happening like it it's really like uh it's overwhelming like the feeling and then like um and even though i got you know a lot of support from the community you know sometimes you feel like alone and that's you know it, it's a lot of pressure on uh you know it gets a lot of pressure on on you and it's like um how do you say, you know, like a snowball when, you know, yeah, things get happening and then it just gets bigger, bigger and bigger. Yeah. And, um, it's, I guess like no, no, no one's mental health has been good in the pandemic. So like, it's, it's no surprise. Like mine hasn't been like the best either. So mm -hmm. like, I'm still trying to figure out a lot. So like, uh, and, this past few weeks event, uh, it's it's just like crazy. Like it gets it gets to a point where you think like um, it, it gets to a point where you think like oh my god, like is it is it ever gonna end? Like is, is yeah. this is this what we get forever? Like is it ever gonna be be better? So like I'm still like trying to get to adjust to everything. Yeah, and, I, and I'm sure the, the current events that are they're surfacing right now are probably very um, hard for you, too. To, but, you know, there, it, it is very, um, it's reassuring to know that someone who is as strong of a leader and role model as yourself um, is able to kind of talk about it. And, and some of the things I wanted to, to, to kind of pick your brain about is, how can we change this for gyms? Like, what advice do you have to gym owners for uh, that are, you know, a lot of women come into jujitsu that have been victims of sexual assault or domestic violence or something, and uh, they come into jujitsu very vulnerable, you know. And what advice would you have for instructors and students to be supportive 
of survivors and others that have experienced similar trauma? Well, uh, I guess like the biggest problem is like when the attacker or the abuser it is the owner yeah. or the the That's instructor, true. which is like in a lot of cases and like or when the enabler is the the owner or the gene like instructor because i see a lot of cases and i mean a lot of cases when the uh, abuser is enabled by the gene owner or the instructor like let's say uh the gym has this student and he is like a real high level athlete and then this high level athlete it has been abusing like this white belt girl so she reports him to the professor and then the professor doesn't do anything because this guy's an athlete and they don't want to lose the athlete because she is just a white belt so i've heard so many cases like this or sometimes like this guy is a professor and then the girl reports the professor to the gym owner and then the gym owner doesn't do anything because this guy is the professor. So like the, the problem is when the enabler is the instructor, the gym owner, like that's like the problem is when the enabler is super high, like mm -hmm. the, the how, what do we do when the enabler or even the abu abuser is like so high in power like what do we do like that's like that's a real problem like what what can we do like i i don't know but first of all i think like it's so wrong for a professor to make a move on a student that's that's so like you do, you don't do that that that's so messed up like it it doesn't matter like if you're single she's single like you, you don't do that you don't make a move on your student that's wrong like i i've i've seen cases where like they like a professor end up marrying the students and but i i think it's wrong for a professor to make a move on the student i just i just think it's wrong like i i don't think it's okay but um i i think that's the real problem because like uh, it, i've seen too many people high in power enabling like the predators the, the abusers like and what what can we do about that and honestly i don't know like and it, that it gets me like a feeling like a, of despair of, like hopelessness like honestly like what can we do like i i i don't know like it it, it makes me like a, a little <laughs> desperate because I, I wish like i wish there was something like that that we could honestly do because not everybody is a decent human being because sometimes you're going to report then and they're actually going to do something about it but most mm -hmm. most of the time you're going to report then and they're going to completely ignore the report. They're going to completely ignore mm -hmm. and they're going to pretend they never heard it. What advice do you have to women that are maybe experiencing harassment or feel unsafe? What, what advice would you have to them if they're in that sort of situation? Um, I think like they should definitely have somebody to talk to um definitely somebody to talk to a friend uh another woman um the probably should uh i don't know try and have some proof of it so they can report to the police because it's so hard reporting it to the police because they're like, oh, do you have some proof? I can, we can never mm -hmm. do, like, they can never do something about it. And especially in jiu-jitsu, it's so hard, like, because uh, somebody, in, some, sometimes in training, like, because we can feel when we're grabbed, like, with maliciously, you know, 
because even though there's so much touching in jiu-jitsu, we can tell when mm -hmm. the touching is not like because I've touched so many boobs. I've touched so many boobs that I didn't mean to touch, but <laughs> but we can tell when the touching is is not meant. But like you come to your professor like, hey, this guy touched my boob and they're like, oh no, he was just trying to pass your guard. Mm -hmm. Like how how do we prove it? How do you say but we know, we know mm -hmm. it was not, but like how how can we prove that? So I I think it's always important having somebody to talk to you and uh probably uh saying saying something to the guy, you know, like first time you feel uncomfortable, say it to the guy because if you don't say the first time, he's going to keep on doing it. And mm -hmm. um, maybe if you say the first time, he's going to stop. And he, if he doesn't stop, I guess, I don't know, uh, report it to a higher person. If the higher person doesn't do anything about it, leave the place. Because I see a lot of, you know, a lot of girls come up to me and they... They're like, hey, uh, I've been harassed in my gym. Professor doesn't do anything about it, but I don't want to stop doing jujitsu, and mm -hmm. there's no places nearby. And it, it's hard because, like, I don't want to tell them to give up jujitsu, but what do you say? Like, what, what's the option? Like, it's yeah. uh, it's really it's really complicated because. Um, should they they stop doing jujitsu? Because I don't want to tell them to stay at a place they're not respected. But I I don't want to tell them to give up jujitsu. But I I honestly think that in this situation it's better to to give up jujitsu than to stay in a place where they they're 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 harassing you. Yeah. No. I, that is a hard one. You know. We, in a lot of areas, it, it is nice, though, with the growth of jiu-jitsu, we are seeing more and more academies, so there's more options. So hopefully with the more yeah. academies that are coming out, women won't be faced with, not as many women will be faced with that hard decision. Because I know, you know, it is hard. Do you, do you stay where you're unsafe or do you stop doing jiu-jitsu? That's a really tough decision. It's an unfair decision for a victim to have to make as well, you know. So, you know, I, I, I wanted to kind of to see if you had anything that you'd like to comment on. You know, we see we're in the midst right now of a lot of uh, there's a lot of momentum, right, with the most current uh, of current uh, issues that have come to light. And it's kind of, again, snowballed, right? There are more and more women, more and more young girls that are coming forward, more and more stories now that we're finding out that have been buried um, by, you know, high level athletes and people that we look up to uh, in the jujitsu world. Do you have anything that you'd like to comment on as far as what's going on? I know it's very difficult for you to probably talk about this, but I know a lot of people are wondering what you, uh, if there's so anything you'd like to say. So, like, on this last few days' events, I think, like, uh, like I was saying, uh, usually, like, the enablers coming from, like, the high power. So, like, so in this case, like, we had the highest power possible within the gym enabling and protecting a predator. So, like, in this case, like, what could you do? Like, the highest guy in the gym was protecting... A predator so and uh, needless to say that's so wrong that's and um, he and he later apologized and I honestly don't buy his apology because he came three years too late and um, his speech was uh, clearly not written by him uh, it, it seems like it was written by a lawyer and uh, it honestly didn't seem very honest to me because like I said it was two years too late and it 
it wouldn't have been perfect three years ago. Like, mm-hmm. if he had issued that apology, and he, if he had stood by it three years ago, that would have been amazing. Like, if he... And, and again, like, because he was pressured by the media to issue that apology. It, it was not something that he felt he should do. Because he was pressured a lot by the media to issue that apology. Because if, if it was something that uh, Marcel Gonçalves did something and he was like, oh no, you did, you did this, now I feel I should do this. It, 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 that was not the case. That was something Marcel did this and then the media was on him and now he felt that he should do this. That, that's not a sincere feeling. You know, because if 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 that was the case, like myself, it is, and I'll, oh, I don't think you deserve a black belt, uh, and so I'm gonna take your black belt away from you. I'm gonna disassociate from you. You don't represent my team anymore. I'm gonna open a board. I think it's the um, sexual assault, assault board or or something, mm-hmm. and. Um, if he had issued that, like I said, three years ago, amazing, perfect. Mm-hmm. But if you protect a uh, abuser, if you uh, enable him, if you tell the gene owner to pay him thirty-five thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and uh, you have him in your gym three years later you hang out with him for three years and then suddenly after the media puts all the pressure on you and you're like i'm sorry i don't buy it yeah i don't but too little too late Uh, yeah too little too late and then there's the case about uh bonito in brazil that's uh he made no comment about it, so he's not denying it, he's not uh, confessing, but uh, the girl said, and I don't think there's no reason for anyone to make that up, and uh, a few of his black belts uh, narrated a story, one of them even named himself. He's like, I'm a man, I was there, I saw it, so I'm gonna say that this happened. So mm-hmm. a few people that were there actually said, I was there, I saw it happening. And um, if the story is how it goes, like if you see a girl uh, suffering a rape attempt and then you tell her, hey, don't press charges, and then she does, and then you go like, hey, you ruined the camp and you force her to withdraw her statement. I mean... Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, there's <laughs> no excuse possible to for that behavior. Mm-hmm. No, none whatsoever. Yeah. So, well- there's... And, like, seeing so many people staying silent and uh, so many people actually approving this behavior, this, like it, like, it breaks my heart and it makes me so sad and angry at the same time. Like, it's... Yeah, it's, it's devastating. It's, it's horrible to see this. You know, it's it's like a reoccurring issue, right? That we keep seeing over and over again in Brazilian jiu-jitsu and in so many other sports. Um, but I think one of the things that we've seen a lot more of is a lot more men standing up and saying, this is wrong. Um, and a lot of prominent men like Mo, ADCC, right? Uh, jumping in yeah. and really spearheading this and really build, helping to build a lot of momentum. What are your thoughts on, you know, like, how do we keep this momentum going? How do we get more, you know, does it make a difference if the men are standing by us saying, this is wrong, we need to do something about it? Um, and, like, 
what are your thoughts on on getting them more involved? Should they be more involved? And does it does it make a difference if it's men or women that are helping to support and uh, bring awareness to this issue? Uh, I I'm saddened to say that unfortunately it seems that when men speak out, yes, it makes a difference. It does. Um, because like uh. I it seems that um a while ago it seems like always when like uh you know a case like this comes to light is always women who been through this uh speak out but mm -hmm. when you see men who probably have not gone through this speaking out like it seems like that it gives us it gives like power to the to the issue um so it it it, it saddens me that he has he has he needs a male boy to have power but unfortunately it does he need we need the we need we need male support to Him, but but gladly we do have it. We have we yeah. have Tone the Blast is speaking out on it. Emil Fisher has been uh, talking about it. Dante Leon has been talking about it, and like um, so so many men have been talking about it, and like I'm glad they have. Yeah, absolutely. I I agree with you. I think it does. It, it brings uh, it brings. I, I hate to say it brings more strength to the cause, um, but it definitely does make a difference when you do have men chiming in and saying, hey, what, what's going on is wrong, you know. Um, but moving on towards to the future for yourself, um, you know, I know you're, you're in Brazil, you're back home, um, and, 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 and to touch on what you just discussed, thank you so much for opening up about that. I know it's per, it must be very hard for you to, to even see what's going on now and to talk about it again. Um, so I really appreciate you providing that insight um, and sharing that with us. I think that's important for people to, to hear your voice in this as well. Um, but with you moving on and moving forward, what are some of your personal plans um, going forward should, will we be seeing you back in the competition scene doing seminars or do you have any other new goals on the horizon to be honest like i've been going through kind of like not very motivational period of my life so i honestly don't really know what's gonna gonna happen in the future for me so like i'm still trying to figure out what's gonna happen so I don't really know what's what's in a store in the future for me but uh, I prob I'm I'm probably not done with computing I'm, I'm probably still still gonna gonna do some competition in the future it's it's, <laughs> it's probably not over forever like it's it's still gonna happen <laughs> yeah, well you went you went full speed ahead for a very long time you were just running yeah yeah I, pro I probably competed for like 10 years so like you could take a break and then, and then like come back <laughs> <laughs> i think it's good to come up for air right and is there anything new yeah. that maybe you've discovered during the pandemic that maybe new interests that you have or new new things you want to pursue oh. in your life? I I got really into like collecting like swords and stuff. Like, oh, wow! You got a <laughs> fantastic collection. <laughs> yeah, they, you... they're all like uh, anime, anime like. Um, replicas so like i got i got into it like uh <laughs> during the pandemic <laughs> that's awesome have you ever, have you gotten into weaponry at all like like using no the no 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 they're they're, no, just, they're just for show they 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 don't work <laughs> yeah no no they're, they're just for show <laughs> No. Yeah, I got I got into anime stuff. I mean, I always liked it, but like I got more into it like in the in the 
pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I think the pandemic opened up a lot of new interest for a lot of us, right? Not being able to train. Yeah, a lot of people got it. <laughs> <laughs> moving on to other things and other <laughs> hobbies and yeah. So how are things in Brazil now with the pandemic? Is it are gyms open is it normal training or or how is it as a as a whole um jujitsu training i think is almost back to normal uh sometimes it closes sometimes it opens back up like um like the regular gym you know like the lifting weights um uh, i think most of them like have regular hours it's just like you have to wear a mask to mm. work out i don't know how how is it how it is in the u.s now i i uh, heard like some places like you don't have to wear a mask anymore we did but then now we're kind of going backwards in a lot of places where they're starting to reinstate the mask man mandate uh starting to mandate uh smaller groups of people uh indoor activities i'm i'm here in hawaii Uh, we just re-implemented a rule that you can only have, like, I think 10 people in, for indoor events, um, 25 oh. outside. So it's we're having a little bit of a surge, so hopefully it will pass. But I don't know. This has been a very crazy, interesting uh, experience, and hopefully, hopefully it'll pass on through and when we can move on with uh, everything. But I don't know. It's been... It's been hard, you know, I, I, for a lot of gym owners and a lot of people in jiu-jitsu trying to... Oh, yeah. Doing what doing. I, yeah, it's... Because it, it was closed for, like, a lot of months, so I imagine, like, it was probably... Like, oh. Yeah, so here you are... Yeah, I think jiu-jitsu is mostly normal in all, in all the gyms, but um, a lot of people are still, like, very, very scared to, to train, so, like, it's yeah. not normal everywhere i got my first do dose of the vaccine so oh good, good. Uh, i get the second dose in october right. yeah the brazil is not so fast with the vaccination yet <laughs> slowly rolling it out yeah okay. yeah but I, i don't think the brazilians respected the covid very much because like the streets have been crowded ever since like may last year streets were crowded like i don't think they respected it very much uh, i think that texas and florida has just been kind of going along uh in the states <laughs> <laughs> yeah so tournaments like have been oh go ahead go ahead <laughs> yeah yeah because tournaments have been going like ever since like maybe july last year and yeah and mostly well they were limited to like texas and florida were the only states i think that were open uh that didn't shut down for more than like a couple months and then so they i ibjjf and everybody else who's trying to run tournaments has just been kind of going to wherever they can go to to keep things going so I don't know. It's been. Hopefully, we can get back to competing, but soon. Now that everybody's starting to get more and more <laughs> vaccinated. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, it was such a pleasure talking with you, Claudia. Thank you so much for sharing all of that with us. You know, you're, you're such an inspiration um, to so many of us for so many different reasons. You know, not only just for your just your accolades, but just who you are as a person and the strength that you've shown us, you know, and coming forward and, and just, just being who you are, you know, you're, you're obviously a very strong, uh, confident individual that I, you know, is a tremendous role model for so many women and girls alike. So, It was really a pleasure to have you on here today to share your story It with was us. a pleasure for me being here. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I look forward to talking with you again, and, and thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And uh, if you want to say any final thoughts to anybody tuning in today, Claudia, I'll go ahead and let you have that opportunity. Uh, I was uh, just want to say it was a pleasure being here, and uh, thank you so much for having me. And uh, 
hope to see you again soon and uh, hope we can do maybe something live face to face next time. <laughs> Excellent. Absolutely. I look forward to the time where we can and then you know, I just enjoy the time you have. Jujitsu is always going to be there and you know, you you've definitely done a lot in the time that you were very very active. So enjoy your time <laughs> of of regrouping and figuring out what's next for you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you awesome thank you everybody for tuning in we'll see you next time thank you for participating and thank you again Claudia we'll see you guys thank you soon.